dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon. This back here is Bernard. Don't mind him. He doesn't say much but you know he's always listening and today I have a book talk video to share with you guys. Today we're going to be talking about Postscript by Cecilia Ahern. She is a Irish writer who 14 or 15 years ago now I guess uh, published the very popular book P.S. I Love You and it was made into a major motion picture starring uh, Hilary Swank and Gerard Butler and when I saw this I was I was a little curious now between P.S. I Love You and this book there's been I think she's released like 14 or 13 other books like she's a very high output type of author and I haven't read any of her other books and the only reason I really picked up P.S. I Love You the book was because I had seen the movie and I loved it. Now if you've only seen the movie and you're listening to this book talk you might be a little confused with some of the details I mentioned because the book and the film are quite different. The general idea is the same, you know, it's about a woman who loses her husband very young and in the wake of his death she finds that he has left her um, letters and with each letter is kind of a task, something for her to do, somewhere for her to go as a means of remembering him and as a way of helping her, he hopes, to grieve. Um, so yeah, the idea is the same for both the book and the movie, but the details are different. Like for one, in the movie, um, Holly, the Hilary Swank character, she's an American and she meets Jerry, Gerard Butler, while she's on vacation as an adult in Ireland. Whereas in the book, Holly and Jerry knew each other almost their whole lives and started dating as teenagers. So things like that, and they both live in Ireland. America's not involved at all. So details like that were changed. Why, I don't know, but they were. Anyway, so when I heard that, you know, 15 years later this book had come out, I was very, very interested to see where it was going to go because what else could really be said? So I picked it up and I started reading it and the basic premise is this. It's been seven years since Jerry's passed and Holly has a new boyfriend named Gabriel who she likes a lot, you know, she loves him, but in her heart, you know, Jerry is still the love of her life. She, but of course she's only human and she wants someone to spend time with and someone to, you know, build a life with. And Gabriel's a very nice man, so she's got that on the go. Then one day her sister asks her to come on and be a guest on, the, on her podcast. And her podcast is kind of about death and loss and grieving and I mean who else better to do that than Holly. So she goes on and she kind of tells her story and then shortly after that a woman reaches out to her, a woman named Angela and Angela says, um, I've got a group of people and we're calling ourselves the P.S. I Love You Club and we're all terminally ill and we want to write letters to our loved ones the way that Jerry did to you. And we were wondering if you could kind of help us, guide us. And Holly's reaction, her immediate gut reaction is no. You know, that part of her life is over, she's moved on and it was so hard to move on because the loss was so profound but she's finally done it and she's not sure she wants to go back to that and revisit that time of her life because even though she'd be helping these other people the memory of Jerry would just consume her again. She tells her family about it and they have mixed reactions. Some of them think um, yeah that's a great idea others of them agree with her that no she shouldn't do it it's too much but as time begins to pass a little bit she, she cracks in her resolve a little bit and she calls the woman who had contacted her only to find out that that woman had passed away from her illness already and Holly feels a bit of guilt in that because of her waiting she wasn't able to help that woman so she agrees to meet the rest of the members there's four of them and they all have various illnesses. Some are more fast moving, some are more slow. You know, one woman, she has multiple sclerosis, so she doesn't know when it's going to happen, but she wants to be ready for when it does. 
the others have more aggressive forms of cancer and things like that. So, and to Holly's kind of horror, one of the women in there is a 17-year-old girl who has a small child, like a, a, a one-year-old baby. And this young girl, you know, she wants to be able to leave a letter behind for her daughter. But she gets more of the story when the girl tells Holly that um, the big part of the task would be her learning how to write because she dropped out of school so young um, that she doesn't know how to read or write. And Holly's kind of like, well, how can I say no to this? So she agrees to help, help them all, all four of them. And that sets Holly off on this journey that she's not entirely sure she wants to be on. Interspersed with that, we see Holly dealing with her, um, her current boyfriend, Gabriel. He's got a 16-year-old daughter who he's trying to build a relationship with. He hasn't had one for most of her life, and he's trying his hardest to try to fit into her life somewhere. She's a bit of a troubled girl, always in a lot of trouble, always yelling and screaming. There's not, you know, there's a lot going on there, but he's trying his best. So Holly doesn't tell him for a little while about the P.S. I Love You Club and that she's going to be helping them. She doesn't quite want to get into that with him yet. Also woven into all of this are memories of Jerry and what Holly truly thinks and feels about the letters that he left behind. Because while those letters were done with such good intention on Jerry's part and he thought it was going to be wonderful and such a gift to her, and it was, we have a moment where Holly says, when she's speaking to one of these four people that she's working with, she tells them that to her, for her and her healing, that she wished he had stopped about halfway through with the letters. You know, he left 10, five was perfect, and then the rest, it kind of held her back from being able to properly grieve because she was constantly waiting for more from him and she knew that it was going to go out carry on for a whole year almost and it held her back and she's at the point now where it's been you know six seven years she can admit that truth she can admit that it didn't help after a certain point and that's a kind of a big thing to admit to say out loud and um, she also talks about some of the tasks that he had given her like in one letter he tells her to get rid of all of his belongings not to hold on to them any longer and she did as she was told and she kept the things he told her to keep um, but in with all this time having passed now, she thinks, you know, he asked that of me too soon. I wasn't ready. And now there are things that I gave away because he told me to that I desperately wish I had kept. So she thinks, you know, maybe if he had waited a little, you know, another month or two before telling her that, she would have had a bit more clarity and would have been able to do things more on her time because that's the thing while he's trying to help her he's also forcing a timeline on her and grief is so different for everybody that it's not really fair to force what you think is the right amount of time onto the people you've left behind another thing she comes to think that he maybe got wrong was that he had left her um, a watch that his father had given him and you know it just sat in a box in her dresser and she thinks that it's wrong he should have given that back to his dad so one day she gets in her car and she brings it over to his dad and it meant so much to his dad to have that back i'm a little blurry right now because um, i just reached down to grab something and i've just come back up and i can see from my perspective looking in the viewfinder I can see that the focus, the little focus box is on Bernard's face. <laughs> it's focusing on him. Okay, let me see if I can get them to focus it. Okay, I've got it back now. <laughs> anyway, so this book is kind of a really touching story about the 
the reality of grief, you know, many years later. P.S. I Love You was kind of that romantic story of a husband who leaves behind this treasure trove for his wife to help her grieve and it's all very romantic and very beautiful. Whereas postscript is kind of the reality of it. The true feelings that she has after she sat with these letters for years and years. The ways that she feels it affected her life. The ways that she feels he got it wrong. And I think that's so interesting. So the stuff about the PS I Love You Club, the, that was all very touching and I shed a few tears here and there when I was reading these people's stories. That's really beautiful and that's a great part of the book. But for me, it was the other parts, the parts where she talks about the fallout of those letters that was the real beauty of this book. And uh, that's why I would 100% recommend it. So if you want to read this and you think it sounds good and it's something you've liked, especially if you've read P.S. I Love You, if you've read that book, you have to read this one. You just have to. <laughs> so you can kind of just get the whole story, you know, get to the end of the story. And I just, I think it's, I think it's really lovely. So um, I do want to give one spoiler now. So if you do want to read the book, now's the time to click away. Thanks so much for watching. I always appreciate your support. And we'll get to the final spoiler that I want to share with you guys. It's kind of right at the end of the book. Are they gone now, do you think? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Towards the very end of the book, Holly's getting ready to sell the house that she and Jerry lived in throughout their marriage. And she's getting ready to move in with Gabriel and uh, his daughter Ava, because throughout the book they mend their relationship enough that Ava wants to live with him at least part time. And so Holly's getting ready to sell her house. And after a bunch of paperwork and this and that, she gets a call from the lawyer asking her if she could come in. And she goes in, she's like, oh no, what's wrong? And he says, nothing's wrong, but in with the paperwork for the house, there's a little envelope. And it says on the front that it's to be given to Holly Kennedy in the event that she sells the property. <laughs> I'm sure you know where this is going. And it's one final letter from Jerry. And in it, he says, you know, I have no idea when you're reading this letter. You might never read this letter. You might live and die in that house. It could be some, you know, ancestor of yours, a son or a daughter who's selling the house because you've passed and that's who's reading it. But I just wanted to leave you one final letter. And the letter's really beautiful. And it got me, it got me right in the feelings. <laughs> There was parts of this book where I was kind of like, oh, this is a little cheesy, a little draggy. But when I got to that ending and that final letter, it was honestly really beautiful. And um, it was kind of what she needed at that time. <laughs> and yeah, after that, the book, the book ends. And we're left with Holly moving in with Gabriel who and Gabriel had his own kind of struggles throughout this book with the whole PS I love you club and with thoughts of Jerry he kind of through no fault of Holly's because Holly didn't especially not outwardly compare Gabriel to Jerry but Gabriel compared himself to Jerry and that was kind of a stumbling block for him so he managed to find a way just kind of accept that Jerry's just always going to be there in some form, but he's no threat to Gabriel. So yeah, I thought it was a great book. I really enjoyed it, especially once I got to the end. I just loved it. And I thought it was a pretty raw and honest look at, you know, the other side of a story once the romanticism has kind of worn off of the idea of these letters. I liked it. I liked it a lot. So, oh my god. That was a bit of a situation. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, would definitely recommend. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've read this, what you thought of it, or, um, you know, just whatever your thoughts are in general of the video. I hope you all have a great weekend. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be watching the Breaking Bad movie El Camino. I am so, so, so excited. So much so that I'm going to film a review as soon as I'm done the film tonight and I'm hopefully going to put it up tomorrow. Maybe we'll sit down, have a little glass of wine or a drink and uh, talk about the films. So if you loved Breaking Bad, definitely keep an eye out for that. And yeah, I'll see you guys then. Bye!